Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar with me, Fawad Rasak Salam, market analyst with Think Markets. And in the room is my colleague Victor. Hello, Victor. How are you doing? Hello, Fawad. I'm very doing very well. Uh, very keen to speak about the latest development in the markets with you, as usual. Uh, Indeed. So let's let's hop into it. Let's do that. Uh, so welcome to today's webinar. For those of you who have joined us live, please make sure you qu um, ask us lots of questions. Uh, for those of you who are who are watching a recording of this, please consider joining us live next time. Now, uh, before we begin, please uh, read through the disclaimer on the screen. These webinars are for general information only and are not intended to provide trading or investment advice or personal recommendations. Any information relating to past performance of an investment does not necessarily guarantee future performance. Think markets shall not be responsible for any loss that you incur, either directly or indirectly, arising from any investment based on any information in this webinar. Please remember that the spread betting and trading CFDs carry significant risks and may not be suitable for all investors. Just a quick reminder then that uh, this webinar is taking place every Tuesday at 11.30 London time. We talk mainly uh, on technical analysis front on the major effects current, uh, currency, on the major currency pairs, on gold indices. Uh, we do touch on fundamental analysis, especially my colleague uh, Victor, who you, you've just heard. Uh, he's more of a macro analyst and more of a technical analyst. So together we try to provide uh, to cover both, uh, both sides of uh, the markets in terms of uh, how we analyze the markets. Now, uh, let's uh, jump uh, straight into the charts. And as you can see, um, risk is still um, on the menu. Uh, equity indices continue to make new highs uh, for the year or um, in the case of US uh, markets, or, um, they are trading at record highs. The FTSE here has broken uh, above its um, prior resistance range um, that we had uh, highlighted uh, in one of our previous webinars. It has uh, taken out um, the um, resistance around 7,200 mark, uh, where it had previously found a strong resistance. Um, but now it's cleared through that area and it's uh, uh, you know, built a little bit, bit of a, um, uh, a bull flag kind of a continuation pattern here for a few days before uh, breaking above that uh, at the start of this week. And as we, as we speak, it's uh, breaking further out um, into fresh highs for the year. So the FTSE is one to watch. Um, I reckon this has, because it's been consolidating for so long, for six months um, or around six months, it, um, you know, now that that consolidation is resolved, we should be able to see some significant gains. Now, um, Equity markets uh, around the world, if you you know look at um, the major indices in the in the US, uh, this is the Nasdaq 100. It's, it's very close to its all-time highs. The S&P 500 um, has surpassed its previous all-time high, uh, and it's uh, trading at uh, fresh records. Um, in Germany, the German DAX is uh, looking quite strong, um, and the same picture across the board really uh, here. The Spanish IBEX is even gearing up for a big breakout, I think. Um, and, um, you know, if you look elsewhere as well, like, um, I don't know, even China, uh, the markets have stabilized in recent times. Uh, it has broken the uh, bearish trend line. Um, the Japan uh, Nik Japanese Nikkei index has been, well, it tried to break out, it kind of failed at resistance, but it's uh, nonetheless held support at the lows of the uh, um, prior consolidation range and it's bouncing back. So um, the um, overall picture, as you can see, um, this is the Australian index. Um, this is Dow. Dow has also break, broken above um, its previous record high. Um, so the overall picture is quite bullish uh, from the equity indices. Um, and um, this is uh, in part um, a reflection of the um, strong earnings season we've had. Uh, some 81% of um, uh, S&P 500 companies that have reported their earnings so far have beaten expectations, 81%. So uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, individual names like Tesla um, breaking um, higher, um, Netflix, uh, all these um, major companies, uh, banks, we've seen really good numbers from them uh, previously. Um, and today uh, we, we're going to hear from a, a few more um, uh, technology companies um, as we um, 
highlighted in this week ahead uh, report. Um, and uh, the, the companies that are reporting today include, um, you know, Google Parent, Alphabet, Microsoft, uh, Twitter, AMD, and, and so on. Lots of companies reporting today. Um, the ones highlighted here, they, they will be reporting after the bell. Um, so um, I think before the bell, we'll have uh, GE and UPS, among many others. Um, this week's uh, economic calendar has been quite quiet so far um, in the week. Uh, we haven't had much uh, in the way of economic data. We've had lots of um, company earnings, though. But um, from Wednesday onwards, we'll see the release of more uh, macro figures, including um, inflation data from Australia. We'll have the Bank of Canada's rate decision on, on Wednesday. Um, the Bank of Canada is expected to cut um, QE by another $1 billion um, Canadian dollars uh, from the current uh, 2 billion uh, per week. Okay. Um, on Wednesday, we also have some earnings like eBay, Ford, etc. Thursday, we'll see the um, release of um, US GDP. Uh, that should be really important for the uh, US dollar. Uh, we'll also hear from uh, the Bank of uh, Japan as well as the European Central Bank. I don't think either of these uh, uh, central banks will make any uh, decision on policy especially the um, European Central Bank, uh, because um, their next meeting in December is when they will, um, I think their next week, um, meeting is in December, it's, it's when they will update their economic projections. So this uh, meeting uh, on Thursday will be, uh, will be kind of a wait and see mode uh, without providing us too much information in the way of um, whether or not the central bank is going to... So it's going to be a little bit uh, benign as an event. Indeed. We shouldn't uh, expect much from it. Okay, yeah. so, um, um, yeah, I, I feel the, 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 the same way. Uh, the European Central Bank doesn't have uh, much to offer at this point in time, uh, it's, except for continuing its uh, pretty dovish line. Yeah, uh, we had some news last week, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, one of the most hawkish members oh, yes. uh, of the ECB, uh, the Bundesbank president uh, Jens Weidmann, uh, is stepping down, mm -hmm. and this has been a trend uh, for for the ECB uh, and for every uh, Bundesbank uh, representative on the board of the ECB. Uh, they come in as hawks. And sooner or later, they don't, uh, they, they, they can't stand the dovishness of the ECB and they <laughs> leave. <laughs> Has been uh, in the past with uh, uh, Mr. Weber, uh, Axel Weber. Oh, yeah. And uh, now it's the same with his successor, Jens Weidmann. And uh, they're both uh, expressing uh, hawkish views. Um, traditionally, are very worried about inflation uh, but the ECB is uh, comprised of um, representative from all the eurozone member states and unlike the german economy that can afford higher rates theirs cannot yeah. so the ecb continues to stay pat and continues to stay dovish so to, to be fair to them, uh, they have been quite right about uh, keeping po policy uh, extra loose uh, over the years because uh, inflation really didn't materialize until until this year. Uh, well, pretty, right. Sooner yeah. or later, it does materialize. It, it does materialize sooner or later. But had they had they tightened their policy in the previous years um, and and with the pandemic that uh, caused a significant damage to the global economy. Uh, you know that wouldn't have looked very good on them. Uh, obviously, no one predicted the uh, pandemic, but uh, the, the the eurozone economy wasn't doing very well before that, anyway. So, yeah. uh, in some ways, they they kind of had to keep the policy loose, even if uh, Germany was uh, was not very happy about it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, even if Germany is uh, the hottest housing market uh, in the yeah. world uh, by some calculations, it's the most overvalued uh, housing market, and obviously this is uh, playing a a, a bag a, a bad uh, vibe on German politicians because affordability of homes is dropping at a record pace. 
that's the problem with uh, with having a um, monetary union system uh, being yeah. part of the eurozone uh, you'll have different economies within the zone gr- growing at different rates and having different rates of inflation but because yeah. uh, they all keep treated the same they can't be uh, uh, adjusting policy because of one member state or a couple of member states so they have to make a decision on the collective uh, members uh, and uh, yeah, that's one of the issues, to be honest, uh, which is uh, one major reason why the UK never joined the Eurozone. And uh, is one reason why they left the European Union altogether, because yeah. uh, they wanted independent, which uh, they have got now. Um, so with the ECB being dovish, and we don't expect them to change um, their stance, do you reckon we'll see a new all-time high on the German DAX index this week? Oh, I'm not sure about this week, but uh, yeah. it, it appears that we're headed that way. Um, the ECB could certainly provide a provide momentum if they um, issue a statement that is uh, dovish enough. Per- personally, I feel like they're most likely going to uh, signal at some point. I'm not sure whether it it will be this meeting or next, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, but um, I feel like they're going to announce uh, some more uh, QE, uh, which will be at a slower pace, yeah. because as a, as as things currently stand. Um, I think that in February or in March next year, uh, their QE program is expiring. So, so yeah, I, I don't expect them to just leave things as they are, meaning that they'll do a little bit more just uh, to prevent the ad- abrupt um, removal yeah. of liquidity from the system. So this is why I think the the stocks are going higher and the yeah. euro is struggling to 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 um, to rebound from recent uh, levels where it's been sent by uh, uh, after a recent uh, bout of strength in the U.S. dollar. I heard uh, that uh, a growing number of economists are uh, predicting that the um, uh, European Central Bank will. Uh, expand the pace of its previous uh, asset purchase program, which is uh, running at 20 billion euros, if I'm not mistaken, per month. They're going to expand that to 40 billion uh, uh, when uh, the current uh, PEPP purchase uh, pandemic uh, emergency purchase program comes to an end. Um, So when uh, that happens in March, I think they're going to uh, boost the size of the... uh, uh, the previous uh, asset purchase program to uh, you know double that to to 40, 000, uh, 40 uh, billion euros per month of worth of purchases, and then they they're going mm-hmm. to then taper that slowly, just so that they don't um, they don't cause any major issues in terms of the uh, supply of or the circulation of money in the in the eurozone. So right. against that backdrop. The European Central Bank is going to remain one of the most dovish uh, central banks out there, which should mean, therefore, that the euro as a currency should remain under pressure um, against currencies where the central bank is turning hawkish, for example, the pound. Um, And indeed, that's uh, how the uh, euro pound has been uh, trending, right? Uh, It has broken uh, down from uh, previous consolidation range, as we had highlighted previously. It has hit our first target at 84-ish, which was the this level right here, which, uh, where it previously broke out from. Uh, we think it's going to go a lot lower from here. Uh, 83 yeah. is our immediate target, which is where the euro pound has previously bounced from uh, in the past, in 2017, uh, sorry, 2016, 2017, and well, in end of last uh, 2019 and the start of uh, 2020. So... That's a strong or has been a strong support level. Uh, but the way price action is shaping and the, and the uh, uh, 
aforementioned uh, macro backdrop, uh, I reckon that uh, all the time the euro pound is going to go below 83, uh, possibly head to 80, um, uh, and even more over time. But uh, 80 is my ultimate objective uh, as things stand. So I reckon uh, that's where the euro pound is headed uh, in the coming weeks. Do you, do you uh, generally agree with that? Uh, uh, yeah, the, the assessment is correct. Uh, I feel like um, the the coming rate hike from from the Bank of England uh, yeah. is going to support the British pound, and uh, perhaps um, as we um, you know as as we get the as we gather the language from from the BOE. Uh, on the pace of uh, its tightening cycle, um, we will see what can happen. Well, there is a risk to that outlook, that's, of that's course. Risk. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you're just highlighting it here. Uh, the, while while we all we all been uh, very much uh, uh, hoping for the end of the pandemic, it's. Uh, it's picking up again in the UK, and yeah. this 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 case count can impact and will impact uh, the, the the decisions of the central bank, regardless of uh, inflation at this point in time, which is obviously concerning. Indeed, um, UK has had a very bad um, in, in recent times. The case are growing, as you can see, um, but you know. It's, UK is not alone. Other countries and uh, Europe as well. They, they, you can see that the circles are getting larger a little bit. Um, that's a risk uh, facing the, the pound um, that uh, may prevent the Bank of England from being too aggressive in tightening monetary policy. In any case, uh, the, even despite that, I, I think that the Bank of England, England is more likely to eventually tighten its belt. Uh, more than the uh, European Central Bank, uh, which should keep uh, the euro pound under pressure in the long term. But uh, in the short term, uh, it looks like traders have decided that uh, it is time to uh, sell this currency cross. Yeah. Because we have broken down. Uh, so in the short term, I think the, the path of least resistance clearly to the downside. Uh, resistance is this area I've shaded. Uh, it has been yeah, tested a couple of times in the last few days. And uh, so far, price wants to remain below that resistance zone between 84.50 to 84.70 ish. Uh, if we go back above that zone, uh, that should provide a uh, squeeze um, on the shorts. Uh, which should see uh, or which could see rates go back to the 200 day moving average or higher uh, before deciding on this next move. But, um, uh, speaking of the euro, let's uh, look at the main uh, currency pair, uh, the euro pan. Previously, we were uh, looking at these two scenarios uh, as rates were climbing to this uh, resistance area. Uh, as you m may remember, I said, uh, we, we, we both uh, uh, indicated that uh, this is a key resistance area that uh, we expect to hold, uh, leading to a possible drop to 116.20, which is the previous resistance level. That level ha was retested quite uh, soon after that uh, last webinar. We have subsequently broken below the 116.20 level uh, and price is now retesting it from uh, underneath. So uh, where do we go from here? Uh, well, it's, it's, it, I'm really in two minds about the euro dollar. I uh, think uh, overall the likely scenarios that will head uh, further lower, but uh, US dollar has fallen uh, uh, against some of the other currencies like the, the pound and the Aussie and the Kiwi, which makes yeah. me wonder, even against the uh, price of gold, gold has risen, silver has risen, which makes me wonder whether we will see further weakness in the euro dollar. Um, so that's well, the dilemma. Uh, yeah, the, 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 I, I guess the, the state uh, of the dovishness of the ECB on Thursday may shed some light on that. Um, 
I'm not banking on big moves uh, for the euro yeah. dollar in the in the coming uh, well until the rest of this week or perhaps until at least until the rest of this uh, I mean until the meeting of the ECB. Sure. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, generally we 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 have we seem to have uh, reached a, a a peak for the dollar. I'd be surprised if uh, like. Well, first, uh, it, it can visit that 1495 uh, level that we yeah. previously highlighted. As, uh, pre That's the previous, pre pandemic uh, uh, high. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it sits just below the uh, psychologically important 115 level. And the fact that we've bounced just ahead of that level makes me uh, very, um, it, it makes it look very, uh, what do you call it? Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I would say dodgy, right? Um, right. I I think uh, when when it's uh, when when it comes very close to a key level like 115 and it bounces, uh, usually, in my view, that's uh, that's uh, a deliberate, uh, for the lack of a better word, attempt to make people think that the market has bounced uh, has bottomed. People would be keen to buy the dip here because of uh, the apparent reversal pattern. But because it's, it, it um, hasn't touched uh, or tested the, 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 the key level that we were previously looking for, the 115, um, I, I reckon that there is a, a greater risk that we will see a, a drop to that level. And then... Um, if that level then is reclaimed, then there's a greater chance uh, uh, that we may see a, a significant recovery. <laughs> recovery, excuse me. So, I think um, for me to turn bullish on the euro, I, I would like to see that 115, uh, re, um, uh, that 115 level or 114.95 level tested first. I want to see a big drop to it, and then a quick rejection is what I'm looking for. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, um, I think uh, I would need to see this uh, shaded region cleared. So a move above 117 uh, before turning uh, somewhat positive on, on the euro dollar. Overall, I, I, I prefer the dollar over the euro because the Federal Reserve is uh, more likely to tighten uh, its policy compared to the eurozone um, central bank. All right, so uh, shall we move on to some uh, other currency pairs? Sure. Um, so the dollar is, uh, before we touch on the dollar yen, let's, let's quickly yeah. uh, look at the Aussie and the Kiwi. Um, the Aussie has broken its previous high, which was here. Yeah. And it's consolidating and it's around it's consolidating this. around yeah. here. Which is let's a positive. What happens. Well, yeah. it's basically uh, contingent on a continuation in the rally across risk assets. Risk uh, assets, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, there is a bearish trend line coming in above the 200 day moving average. New Zealand dollar has broken higher uh, as we had uh, expected. Uh, it too is consolidating above the previous high, which is a positive sign, right? You want to see a consolidation uh, after breaking a key level like that. Um, uh, the consolidation allows uh, short term oscillators like the RSI um, to work off its overbought conditions, allowing it to then gear up for another move higher. And so I reckon this is bullish price action that we're seeing in the New Zealand dollar daily chart. Uh, the, the, the New Zealand dollar is also above the 200 day moving average, providing as an objective um, indication uh, of the trend, which is that it's bullish. Um, and uh, the Canadian dollar is uh, looking quite weak still uh, because of the ongoing rally in the crude oil prices and uh, a hawkish uh, central bank. Um, the Bank of Canada is going to taper QE, or that's at least what the market is expecting, by another, uh, uh, what is it, 100 billion per month, uh, per week rather. Um, and uh, that's going to, uh, I think, is going to uh, keep the uh, Canadian dollar supported. And we could see uh, the Canadian dollar 
uh, go a little bit lower from here. Um, overall, um, the Canadian dollar remains one of the strongest currencies out there. So if you're bearish on the US dollar, I wouldn't necessarily play the... Um, uh, sorry, if, if you're bearish on the US dollar, then the Canadian dollar is the best uh, currency pair, in my view, to express that uh, view on the US dollar. But if you're bullish on the US dollar, then perhaps um, uh, pair the US dollar against a weaker currency like the Japanese yen or the right. uh, or the Swiss franc, where central banks are expected to keep monetary policy loose for an extended period of time. Uh, speaking of the dollar Swiss, um, the dollar Swiss is actually not as, um, it's not showing the price characteristics that you would expect judging by what happened in the dollar yen pair okay so the dollar swiss is still holding um inside um a holding pattern here uh with the uh, uh downside supported by the uh, rising trend line and the 200 day moving average with the um, while the uh, um, upper side is uh, resistance is provided by the uh, downward sloping trend line and the 21 day exponential so it's kind of uh, stuck between um, two converging trend lines here. Um, whereas yeah. if you look at the uh, dollar yen, uh, this has broken out clearly. Um, and it's, it's kind of uh, still exhibit, exhibiting a bullish price action. Uh, given that uh, a lot of investors see the Japanese yen and Swiss franc um, the same in, in that they're both uh, deemed to be haven currencies and where the central bank is going to be uh, very dovish for an extended period of time. Um, I, I reckon that uh, if the dollar has any chance of a strong uh, comeback, it will be against the Swiss franc. So uh, I, I remain bullish on this from a macro point of view, but uh, I need to see a, a technical trigger uh, to uh, before establishing a, a trade in this. Uh, you know, um, we do have the price uh, above the 200-day moving average, which is a positive sign. But I think. As a minimum, I would like to see rates break the uh, short-term bearish trend line for me to turn bullish on this uh, market again. So while it's holding inside the uh, converging trend lines, uh, I think there are better opportunities elsewhere. Speaking of uh, the dollar uh, of the uh, Swiss franc, uh, let me just uh, share one franc cross with you guys the the pound franc if i can find it yeah it's, uh, yeah. yeah yeah it's uh it's a long consolidation here very long consolidation uh, I, I, we we have yeah. discussed it i think uh, a couple yeah. of weeks ago yeah um it continues to to hover just above the 200 day uh simple yeah. moving average yeah and um, the, the, every indication is that uh, we could see a, a break, uh, yeah. provided that uh, the, uh, the central bank uh, of uh, the UK indeed yeah. raises interest rates and turns hawkish. Indeed. So we, we reckon that uh, eventually we'll see a big breakout on the pound Swiss. It's still consolidating, but uh, the longer this consolidation goes on, the bigger the uh, eventual breakout is likely to be. The bigger, the the yeah. the, the more um, significant. Significant. The conclusion will be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That conclusion could be to the downside as well. Bear that in mind. Um, yeah, that could happen sure. uh, uh, if, for example, uh, the UK goes back in another lockdown. Not. Yeah. Um, uh, something is, something uh, to bear in mind. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. There, there are risks to every outlook so whatever we say guys uh, don't yeah. like it's our current opinion at the on on the current market state yeah. it doesn't mean that we are forecasting this to happen sure it means that we just see it as more likely to happen than not yeah and that's an important that can point change you uh, tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> yeah or later today we always uh, make our uh, judgments based on the available information we have at uh, our disposal uh, and, you know, the way the markets work is that new information comes out that we don't perceive or we don't know, and the market doesn't know, and things change. Uh, right now, 
it's pointing higher, but maybe uh, in a week's time, things might be a lot different. Anyway, uh, enough of the Swiss. Let's uh, move on to uh, another more. What, what should we look at next, uh, Victor? Should we have a look um, at commodities? Shall we look at gold? Gold, yeah. 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 Gold is... Uh, Here we are. Yeah, it's it's continuing to show strength um, in the face of uh, rising um, bond yields. Uh, admittedly, some of the strength in gold is uh, undoubtedly because of the pause that we've seen in the dollar uh, or the weakness, the slight weakness we've seen in the US dollar against the likes of the pound, against the likes of the uh, uh, Aussie and the Kiwi and the Looney. Um, but yields have managed to stay elevated. Uh, you know, this is the US 10 year. Yes, they have come down a little bit, but the trend has been bullish. Likewise, yeah. uh, German yields, same same story. Um, and just to make it clear, that's not the, just the US or uh, Eurozone. You know, if you look at the 10 year UK yields, they have broken out and remain above the breakout area. So against this backdrop, do you think gold is going to be able to sustain its breakout? Well, it's, uh, f first of all, I, I feel like uh, the uh, 1800 level uh, it, it has been, you know, important. I, I yeah. feel like uh, at this point in time with the uh, current um, um, expectations of the market to, to, for the Fed to deliver tapering, I don't see what surprises are in store for, um, for gold to remain where it is, meaning that I don't see more negative uh, news uh, for gold meaning that the Fed will taper, that, that we all know that. Uh, at this point in time, I, I feel like the market has priced it all in. If there are some um, um, people that are going to uh, short gold based on the Fed actually tapering, I, I feel like they're going to get trapped rather than uh, um, you know, time a good entry to go short. Excellent. Market. Yeah, I think uh, you nailed it on the head there. Uh, you raised a very, you know, good, uh, uh, very important point, I should say, because uh, usually the markets move based on expectations rather than based on the actual use. And the expectations have been rising that the Fed will taper. Uh, that Those expectations uh, could be fully priced in by now. So, most certainly, most yeah. certainly, it's uh, um, something that uh, um, not many people are talking about. That uh, these uh, these um, the, the the Fed's tapering is is a done deal. Like it's it's not something that the market will be surprised by. We all know it's uh, coming. It has been communicated very clearly that it's coming. Yeah. The pace at which the Fed is going to uh, taper has been communicated well ahead. So, what do we have here? Like, why should we? Um, yeah. Why should we buy dollars at this point in time? It's uh, yeah, the bigger question. <laughs> I don't see many reasons to be honest. So. So based on that, then, uh, and uh, also uh, there's another thing. Uh, if anything, the, the bigger risk is that central banks might uh, go back on their promise of uh, tightening policy because of some renewed uh, bearish development, uh, like uh, new cases of coronavirus uh, or, or variants, uh, which could be, you know, uh, which could uh, cause a, a renewed long dance across uh, the major developed economies. Uh, inflation might not be as uh, persistent as it looks like at the moment. Uh, so it's possible that uh, central banks might not tighten their belts as, as fast uh, or as tightly as the markets are currently expecting. Uh, 
and that should provide uh, additional reason for gold and silver to potentially go higher. Silver is look, looking uh, positive as well. It's uh, coming up to the 25 level here. Uh, just stalling a little bit ahead of it is broken the bearish trend line. So it's looking quite quite uh, positive as things stand. Uh, you disappeared there for a second. Uh, you... Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, crude oil is uh, testing the 2018 high at the uh, Brent uh, yeah. contract. And uh, 85 level, which is a psychologically important level. Let me just get rid of this. Uh, yeah. It has spent uh, several days, uh, as you can see by the wicks of the candles, where, where it's closed. Attempted to break the 161.8 yesterday uh, before closing back where it started, well, near where, where it had started the day. It's starting to struggle a little bit. Uh, we haven't seen a clean uh, reversal sign yet, but I reckon that uh, we will see a reversal somewhere around these levels soon because of several reasons. Uh, among them, Iran and the uh, European Union uh, are expected to hold talks uh, on Wednesday, uh, designed to kind of clear the way for a wider diplomatic push to revive that 2015 nuclear deal. Do you feel uh, like uh, there is a willingness on part of the US to, to reinstate it? At the moment, I don't think there is, but... Uh, they could come back to the table under the Biden's uh, administration. Uh, you know, I, I, to be honest, I, I really am, am not sure. But uh, mm -hmm. that, that's one reason that traders might feel that uh, is a risk that they uh, that the uh, crude oil market is facing uh, of you know additional uh, barrels of oil, millions of barrels of oil uh, coming back from Iran into the market, raising supply. That's a key risk. Uh, well, it certainly is uh, uh, from the standpoint of, from the political standpoint of Europe, it, uh, it makes sense to try to, to, to revive this deal yeah. as uh, current uh, energy prices uh, across Europe are still way elevated. Uh, yeah. Forget oil, natural gas is still pushing higher and um, there is no no relief in in sight really yeah. uh at least until the end of the heating sure season guess. that that is just beginning yeah so it, the, the pressure is really uh, growing on on uh, european union to do something about uh, surging gas prices and electricity prices here uh russia is uh willing to help if uh, the european union uh or, or Germany approves its approves new pipeline. It. Yeah, new pipeline. <laughs> well, uh, uh, yeah, another another controversial point and uh, another yeah um, really challenging um, um, issue for for politicians to solve. Yeah. Um, so that's that. Uh, let's look at uh, cryptos very briefly. Bitcoin broke to a new record high uh, previously, bro broke above this uh, record high. Uh, it couldn't yeah. hold there, uh, dropped back to the 60,000 level and it bounced, creating a nice hammer there from which it has uh, kind of provided the platform for a breakout uh, that we saw yesterday. Today, prices are testing resistance uh, around the current levels, which uh, was previously support, turned into resistance here and resistance yesterday. Let's see if it will break through this resistance and we push on from there to towards 70. Um, we have a webinar coming up, uh, haven't we, uh, Victor? That we will discuss. Oh, yes, those. we do. Um, yeah. we, we will discuss, well, <clears throat> we'll discuss the launch of uh, Bitcoin's ETF and other ETFs on the Think Markets uh, uh, trading platform. Uh, you will get uh, uh, an email uh, yeah. later today uh, when we officially announce it yeah. um, but uh, yeah it will be this Friday actually okay so uh, we look forward to speaking more about Bitcoin and uh, cryptos then 
uh, for now, I don't see any questions from you guys. So we're happy to end the webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, please make sure to join us on Friday. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye.